appreciate it, and I hope to be really brief here. I just want to say a couple of words. One, some thanks, and also just talk briefly about the work, um, give a little insight there. Um, first, huge thanks goes to the Minnesota State Arts Board, um, their Artist Initiative Program. That's the, what funded this project. Um, so, so, huge thanks to them. Um, <clears throat> I will say that this project or this grant that I received um, was, sorry I'm in dad mode, making sure nobody falls. <laughs> um, it was a third attempt and the first two times uh, that the grant did not work out and I got word back and I was totally heartbroken. The first time I was heartbroken, the second time it stung but I got over it. And then the third time to get the word that it actually happened, I was thrilled. But, you know, it's, I guess it just kind of speaks a bit to perseverance. And I, looking around the room, I know there's a number of you that have received them and, and have gotten, uh, you know, thumbs up and thumbs down. And, you know, it's just kind of the, the way this, this, this field works. So, but uh, perseverance is what it's about. Also, huge, huge thanks to Dana for just making cool things happen here at the 410 and all the 410 volunteers, Kurt, Hanging out, keeping me company, playing some weird music today. Putting <laughs> on <laughs> some labels. So, but no, seriously, Dana is just such an arts advocate for our community. We are so fortunate to have her here. Um, and she, when I asked about this show, she was like, heck yeah. So uh, that's just the kind of person she is and the artists that she supports. As I was installing, she was hanging out with some elementary kids in the back, uh, going over some cool line work, and I was just really impressed. So, thank you, Dana. Thank you, David. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. I don't know, Brian? Is Brian Frank here? He's not, he can't come to like 840. Uh, so. 840? There's one <laughs> <laughs> No cookies are left here. Anyway, I should at least say a huge thanks to Brian Frank. Um, he's a dear friend of mine, and... Uh, Let's see here. <laughs> I got to basically hang out with him a lot this summer. And if you look behind these uh, aluminum panels, this is what we do in my classes too. We look awkwardly at everyone. So yeah, Brian, he is uh, Brian Freak, professor of painting uh, up at MSU, outstanding human being. Um, reckless and wonderful and all just things spontaneity uh, and I basically got to pick his brain constantly if like I were to look at like my text messages with him I'm like Brian how do you paint <laughs> and he's like, like this David I'm not a painter but I am a creative and I want to make stuff so I have to figure out how to do it right um, lastly I want a huge thanks to my wife Renee and my son Jasper and my daughter Lorelai uh, <clears throat> They've just been super cool, super supportive of me hanging out in the basement, making my paintings, and I, like Lorelai was helping me pull up some of the, the frisket that makes these hard edges, so they were involved in the process, and Renee is just my creative sounding board. She helps me think through a lot of stuff, so thank you, Renee. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, let me just say a, a little bit about the, the work that's up here on the walls. Um, as, as the name implies, painting songs, you know, I'm at this interesting point in my, you know, creative career where my past interest in music and songwriting are merging with my visual output, and I'm just really happy to be at this moment in time where this stuff is crossing paths. Um, and if you look at the, the artist statement, I do mention that um, part of what I think flu influences both the, the music making, the singer-songwriter components, along with sort of the emphasis on all things like text-based, whatnot, is you know, this like long experience of uh, living with dyslexia, right? And <clears throat> when I was eight years old, for whatever reason, I wasn't keeping up with, well, we know the reason, right? <laughs> but I wasn't keeping up with my peers in school, and I had been doing just fine up until that age range when reading really starts to click for kids. And it wasn't clicking for me, and my folks took me uh, to the University of Iowa to be assessed, and sure enough, that's what came through, was uh, dyslexia. And from that point forward, my parents, especially my mom, were just hardcore advocates for me, making sure that I was getting the, you know, what I needed in school, outside of school. Um, you know, I saw them sit through so many IEP mm -hmm. meetings, individual education plans uh, with teachers, 
Um, they just always had my back. Um, but through having my back, <laughs> I had to study letters like crazy, right? In order to catch up, or I don't know if I ever caught up, but at least to be able to, um, you know, read what my peers were reading. Uh, so I just want to talk about dyslexia for a moment, and that you know, there's sort of this thought that dyslexia is reading things backwards, right? Well, that, that's just a myth, and maybe those of you in this room know that already. Um, but I know it affects everybody a little bit differently, but I would say the most common aspect, and what I recall struggling a lot with, was just simply memorizing words, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to basically put into rote memory, you know, words like all, and being able to, <clears throat> um, when we look at any word, we read it instantly because we're readers, right? And we've got that down pat, and it's because we've stored it in our brain. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of words that we don't have to look at all three letters. We see one big form. We see the positive. We see the negative space. Um, and from that, we pull from our database of words, and we're able to then read very quickly, very fluently. Well, that was a very slow process for me. I couldn't, it was hard for me to get those uh, letters down and memorize, so I would have to go through each and every letter. Um, <clears throat> and, and so that was what my experience was, and I think from that, that you know, working with tutors and having flashcards, oh, all over my house, right? You're probably like, still under the couch somewhere. Um, lots of flashcards, lots of um, you know large books, and my mom reading to me massively. I think just making sure that I was growing up in a language-rich environment helped massively. Um, so <clears throat> that's where this is. I think this stuff is coming from. Just this like lifelong uh, effort to try to well, I, well, when I was younger, catch up, and now to stay. Up. And <clears throat> so letters have just, through through working with them, I think have just naturally become something I really am fascinated by. Their forms, their sounds, the way they blend together, and and then what they mean from that. So that's what these um, paintings, to a certain degree, are, are, are speaking to. And all the work, I'm really fascinated by what we typically see as the positive space, right? Um, or the foreground. <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm particularly intrigued by what's going on uh, in what's the negative space or the background. Because if we didn't have that background, we wouldn't be able to see the foreground, right? So it's like it takes the negative and the positive working together for the form to be you know, legible. And you know, with music, I think there's a lot of parallels. It's like in order to appreciate the notes, you have to have the space around the notes, right? If it was all constantly there, you couldn't enjoy it. So um, it's, for me, it's just kind of this constantly thinking about space, what is present, what is uh, missing, and having a visual ability uh, or it's opportunity to just play with it and inverse it, right? <clears throat> So that's what's going on. Meanwhile, just thinking about you know lyrical content that, of songs that I'm uh, thinking through these days. So um, that's really what I wanted to say. A little bit about dyslexia. A little bit about this current work, Keeper. I already thank you. Could you say it all again, please? <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you, everybody. <laughs> that's the good part. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> You're yeah. like 55 minutes early, Brian. Like, uh, no, we had a birthday party. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Let, me, let me just conclude by saying I'm so grateful to be a part of a creative community. I am grateful to be able to share it. I'm grateful that you all are here tonight. There's lots of food. And there's some drinks back there. I hope you know you help yourself. I can't possibly take that many cookies home. Um, so help me out. And uh, yeah. Uh, have a great evening. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer those, and I'm happy to chat with you more one-on-one -on -one as well. But again, thanks to everybody. Appreciate it.